This is Corey Jones with the Be Ready with Safety Man podcast. Join us every week for a new podcast. Follow us everywhere podcasts are played and on YouTube, Be Ready with Safety Man. This is Corey Jones. All right. Welcome to Safety Man podcast. I'm Corey Jones with Safety Man Security Consulting, safetyman.co. And I'm with Anthony Sakali, Ida Hoagie. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> and today we got a good good topic for you it's appropriate with what's going on and we hope we can provide some good examples so anthony you got it uh yeah so today we are going to talk about uh barricading against um home invasions which uh is a big topic looters rioters but also this will also go for natural disasters as well a lot of the same principles um take part into you know what we'll get into about boarding up the houses and things like that um but barricading in your home what to do and hey a zombie like we always talk about zombie apocalypse right if you're ready for a yeah, zombie yeah, yeah. apocalypse you're ready for anything so uh and they actually bar- said that on fema's website if you remember that yeah yeah FEMA's that's website. what i mean like you're well, ready we for don't that. believe you're in zombies <laughs> yeah so and what did we have yesterday i mean we had a, a giant storm blow through there's people who are still without power mm-hmm. you know this has actually affected people probably more than in a different ways than the pandemic has you know yeah yeah, I know. I know in my area there, I actually let someone borrow my generator today because they mm-hmm. I luckily have power, but um, some people don't. So I actually let someone borrow my generator because they don't have any power right now at all. So, yeah. um, so first thing, let's let's I just want to throw a disclaimer out there. First and foremost, if there's any kind of riot, loot, home invasion, first thing is obviously call 911. Like that's your yeah. first uh, role of defense, uh, you know, calling 911, getting some help, getting somebody there. Uh, second disclaimer, I'm going to say that anything that we talk about today, uh, make sure that you check with your local fire code, um, local township codes, state codes, and uh, also some homeowner associations have different rules too. So just because we're saying this, make sure that you check into these things before you just go doing and say, oh, I saw it on Safety Man, so it must be good. Exactly. Um, so make yeah. sure and, that way. and like you said also check your use of force laws because use yes. of force laws are different from state to state and just because you hear something on the news that was okay in texas florida or pennsylvania new jersey is a different animal and i know a lot of our viewers and listeners are in new jersey so just make sure you check the use of force codes you know both anthony and i can speak really well to that and if you have questions about it i got two today just alone from from clients that are buying tasers and they're trying to choose between tasers and handguns for defense. And, you know, some of the myths that are out there about use of force alone or misinformation ah. is great. So make sure you, when you're making your plan, like Anthony said, check all the legalities, whether it be for your business, your home, or for you personally driving around. Yeah, 100%. Uh, so I figured step one, talking about, and this doesn't have to be naturally like an actual barricade, the first step. I think the first step is just the initial day-to-day how do you physically technologically protect your home on a daily basis like what what are your top things that you know that you think you should have yeah well it's great because one of my jobs when i was uh back in the police department was community policing and i actually went to a school called septed the class called septed crime prevention through environmental design and we actually learned how to protect how to deter how to push crime to another area based on just environmental things you're doing. Lighting is one good thing, you know? Mm. Lighting back then was all incandescent. Lighting costs a lot more money just to run and just to to have. Now, almost everything is LED and you can get a lot of solar lighting just just to make people wanna choose some other place. You know, solar lighting is definitely good, you know? And and everything that, that, you know, Anthony kind of gave me a list of some of the things he wanted to talk about because, you know, we're preppers, right? And safety man's always talking about be ready. So we don't go into these, these things blind, but everything he has on here, we have at our home. Mm-hmm. Everything you have on your list, we have at our home. We have cameras. Yeah. You know, I have an alarm you know, and I'll stop there and let, and let you talk about some of those things that, you know, you may have come across. Yeah. Everything here in the first step too. I mean, I'm living by it. I have it in my home as well. So mm-hmm. uh, the thing about lights. So I just, like you talked about, you brought up solar a couple of years, like 10 years ago, solar lighting was crap. You know, it, the, they didn't last long. And a couple of years ago, I saw an advertisement for some stuff, and it was like relatively wasn't expensive. I, I mean, I paid probably less than a hundred dollars for um, some floodlights, and I figured, you know, this would be like like decent for my driveway. I'll check it out. 
and I got, I'll tell you what, it is bright and it lasts yeah. long and it's motion sensitive. So it like lights up my whole driveway. Um, like it's a very inexpensive uh, investment into my home. And then I actually bought more to do other parts of my house because of that. So the solar has come a long way. Doesn't add to your energy bill. You know, it, you're being uh, green, if you want to call it that. Exactly. And uh, it does a really, the LEDs are so bright. I mean, they really, really light up areas. And I mean, you could probably, I'll tell you this on the other end, and you could probably relate to this too. If you're on patrol, uh, when you were on your days of patrol, having a house that is so much more lit up, if an officer is driving by, they can see so much more of the front of the household. If someone's there, I mean, they know their areas. And so if they see something mm -hmm. out of place, you know, they're yeah. going to see it a lot better. You could sure. see if a window is open or smashed. You know, I mean, you remember driving by businesses at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, right? They always tell you have that alley light on. And if it reflects back at you, that means the, the window wasn't smashed out. You know, so sometimes if you're trying to do this in stealth mode, because we have a lot of stealth cars, a lot of agencies are deploying those stealth cars, the, the all black or the all gray cars to try and maybe catch criminals. So we might not be using those alley lights and floodlights. So as Anthony and we're talking about is just having lighting, but maybe make the criminal go someplace else. That's the whole idea is make them not choose your house. And then you work with your neighbors and make them not choose your block. And then eventually as more people are doing this, we, we start to actually deter crime. Yeah, and, and so going with that, the next things I have, um, mm -hmm. alarms, and like I use, I, I mean, I'm not getting paid to say this, but I mean, uh, I use the Ring doorbell, and it's 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 cheap, and it's effective. Yeah. The video quality is great. I got it right to my phone. I think I pay like literally like $3 a month, and I can monitor yeah. my home like 24-7. So it's, it's, it's great. Um, so yeah. I've been using that. Um, but there is and a you're lot. A hand, you, you're a handy guy, mm -hmm. and installing things is not difficult for you. I'm a, like a, a tech guy, but when I start having to drill holes and stuff like that and run wires, you know, I'm creating way more problems than I'm solving. And Ring is one of those things that you can almost always do yourself, right? Ring, you don't need professional company to come out and drill holes, run wires, and any of that in your house. Ring all works, you know, under its, its own system. So that's good for do-it-yourselfers, DIYers to be able to install that and it's infinitely expandable. So you can start with a ring video doorbell mm -hmm. and maybe a spotlight in your backyard. And then you say, you know what? I like this. Maybe I want the alarm and it all meshes together. They all work together. So you don't have to buy, you don't have to put out $900 on day one. You can get one or two pieces, see how you like it, integrate it to everybody in your family and, and then expand it as you see fit. Yeah. And, and with the ring system, there's two, there's, there's a hard, so um, there's you can put it in there with just batteries, or you can hardwire it. So like I already had, if you have a door a doorbell that's already existing, it makes it a lot easier. So yeah. I don't mess with like electricity when it comes to stuff like that. So I actually had someone to do it, but since everything was already in place, I literally just paid the guy to come out and it was like a service fee, like what I paid the electrician to do it. And mm -hmm. I mean, if you're if you're electric savvy, it's even easier. But I mean, just yeah. on my safety end, I got someone to actually do it, but it was not. Yeah. It was very very cheap. And since, like I said, everything was already in place, he like just hooked it up, checked, tested my wires, make sure they were good, did some other things just to make sure that it was going to flow fine. And that was it, you know, and it was yep. uh, literally like a two hour install of uh, checking everything. And, and that was it. Um, right. So look, go... while we're staying on cameras and alarms, mm -hmm. uh, there's another company out there called Blink, B-L-I-N-K, which Amazon actually bought. And Blink has completely wireless cameras. Mm. They run on two AA batteries and they last up to two years, depending on what motion uh, frequency you have them on. And I have them 360 degrees around my house, too. And the good thing about them is they're waterproof. They'll operate a negative five up to 105 degrees. They have night vision. They're motion detecting. There's no service fee at all for them to store your video clips. And you can set up motion zones that you have on it. So I, the ones in the front of my house... I set up the zones that just make it to the sidewalk. So everybody walking their dogs doesn't set it off. But as soon as you come onto my property, our yeah. property, it'll set it off. And that is no wires. You really don't even need to drill a hole. You can yeah. get some really strong double-sided Velcro and put it up there. Yeah. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's so many. And again, a lot of the things I preach, I, you know, I don't like wasting money. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of things I preach are, I don't want to say cheap. They're very affordable solutions, you know. 
um, you you can have a pretty secure house on a pretty decent budget. Like you don't have to be spending millions of dollars on the in these projects. Like you can these things that I'm talking about are things that I practically have used. And then, yeah, I bought things that are crap, and I'm like, okay, this is crap, and I'll upgrade to the next level until I find that spot. But yeah. I'm not going to overpay for something that does a better job, you know, just because it has a name brand on it or whatnot. Um, exactly. Going with that. Next up I have is locks. Making sure you have good locks, deadbolt. Now, I'll tell you personally, I've had an electronic lock in the past, and it, it's not hardwired in, so if the batteries died, I had issues with it. So I would say, my recommendation is have both. Have a manual deadbolt, and if you are going to use the electric, have that as well um, as yeah. like a door code or whatnot. Um, they have them hooked up to security systems and things like that. I've personally had issues with, problems of it dying or whatnot so having a man if you're going to do that i would just say my personal recommendation is having a manual backup or a slide lock or a deadlock uh to go with it yeah and so the one that i have i probably got mine maybe six or seven years ago and the technology back then was it's a it's a bluetooth i'm sorry it's a z-wave connected to my alarm system it's electronic so i can unlock and lock the door from my phone i can do it from my uh, Amazon Alexa smart device. And also it has a key override. So if the batteries do die, there you, go. you can still get in with your key, but they also have new ones that are keyless. And if your batteries die, it has the female end of a nine volt battery on the outside. So if you just get a nine volt battery and you're outside, it gives it power. So then you can punch in your code. So if you ever are locked out of your house, you just have to drive to the nearest 7-Eleven or Wawa or store if you don't happen to have a 9-volt battery in your car. So they, they do have technology for that if people really like that ability. Because, you know, I, having kids that are sometimes at their father's house and sometimes at our house, you know, I don't want to have to worry about them losing keys. And then and, and that mm -hmm. my dog walkers come by when we go on vacation. I could turn it on for them. And they have a four-digit code. And I, it tells me when they're there, how long they stayed there, when they left. You know, so it, it gives you a lot of different things. But yes, you want to have some ability so when the power goes out, the internet goes out, you can still get back into your home. Yeah. Um, and then the next thing I have, uh, dog, you know, having a uh, man's best friend. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, my dog li sleeps upstairs right in the main section of my house. And soon, it listen... It, it's a double edged sword though because she she wakes me up a lot of times too you know like I'll be like on a night shift and I'm sleeping all day and she's waking me up but at the same time she's got she, she will protect you know if someone comes in I'm gonna know uh, it's gonna give me that extra time frame to prepare if someone's coming into my house or if someone's on my property mm -hmm. uh, dogs are a great investment not only for just security but obviously as like you know a friend and a family you know member yeah. uh, dogs yeah. are definitely. Uh, I, I am definitely a dog person. I get in arguments about it, cats versus dogs, and uh, you know. But how I am does anybody definitely even a dog. argue that. I don't even know how that's even an argument. <laughs> that's like a hoagie versus a cheesesteak. I mean, like, come on. Let's go. <laughs> uh, I am the other thing about dogs is the deterrent factor, right? The, the dogs are the alarm to let you know, but the dogs are the deterrent factor. Depending on how much bass is in your dog's voice, it may make somebody afraid to come in. But if it's a, a smaller dog with a high pitch, incessant barking, then that potential bad guy knows that either the homeowner is going to be aware or the neighbor is going to be aware. I'm going to create commotion and they want to be in and out silently. Right. So the dogs, you know, triple function, like you said, companionship alarm for you and potential deterrent for somebody who wants to do something wrong. I have three big dogs and you know, they, they, I think they got my back. I think so. So, so here is, this is a, this is a study that uh, it's a true study. Um, I learned it actually in a master's class of sex crimes and my teacher, who is a, he was a doctor, and he was also, uh, he worked for Dallas Police Department. He was like a homicide sex um, uh, detective and, and sex crimes detective and, and all that. Um, this study was put out, and they found that um, one of the biggest deterrents of females getting raped in their home was a female that had a dog in their home. Because what they found, and this is a little off topic, but I just threw it out there because of the dog, what they found was that most of these uh, sexual rapists or predators, they have fantasies in their head they're trying to uh, mm -hmm. live out or whatever. And when you have a dog barking the whole time and scratching at the door or scratching at you, even if it's a small little dog, it deters that person from able to 
have their fantasy work out or, or whatever, and yeah, it deters yeah. them from actually trying to rape that female. And it's been a proven study that a dog has prevented a lot of these rapists from happening just because they have a dog. Exactly. Know? And I'm glad you brought that up because there's a, uh, there are companies, if you want to reach out to me at safe to see, I can make a recommendation for a local, uh, uh, dog trainer, retired police officer, uh, in the area that I've done some work with before. And he's actually provided dogs to sexual assault or domestic violence victims. He trains them to be able to defend them. There, there sometimes there are police dogs that couldn't quite make it through the police dog Academy but mm -hmm. they're good enough for something like this. And uh, this one was a 105 pound German shepherd. And I, I mean, you're not going up to this, this woman with this dog. She could walk with it <laughs> off leash anywhere. It's yeah. certified as a companion dog because you know, the PTSD that she suffered from her attack and it's a, a protection dog. And, and, and this dog, like you could walk up, you could shake hands with her. You can say hi. She can tell the dog it's okay. And you can pet it. But you know, if, if you try to, to tackle her, you're going to have a long, you're going to have a hard day. You're going to have yeah. a hard day. That might be a good a podcast we might have to have is, uh, you know, yeah. bring some dog trainers because we have some connections. So I want to move yeah. on to – so uh, we could talk about firearms all day, but I just – you know, obviously we have firearms, um, and that, again, goes state to state. There's differences, but, you know, the legalities of being able to have them. I mean, it's the constitutional right, but there are different levels of, of who can have them per state. Um, yes. But I want to go on to the second step to actually let's talk about now – barricading your home so now there's looting there's rioting there's problems coming that you know I, I think the first thing is this if you're waiting till something happens you're already behind the if you're behind the ball if you have a plan if you have some things in place that you have just at your house ready to go and then you hear about something and you're already going because if you're waiting to go to lowe's to get the stuff as the riots are already happening guess what lowe's is already closed home depot is already closed or you're not gonna be able to get in or the stuff sold out so yep. yep having a plan a small plan again very inexpensive stuff i'm going to talk about here having a very inexpensive plan and having some th stuff in your garage ready to go uh makes a big difference so exterior yeah. the biggest one i'm gonna start with is is plywood you know that plywood and you know having i'm not a huge power tool guy i don't have a million power tools but having a power drill hammer nail and screws will get through your basis operation of what you need in your house right right now um, again and this is for an emergency right you yeah obviously we're not telling homeowners to <laughs> drill plywood all yeah. over the, the front door and windows of their house i mean this is when you know you, you have this stuff, you have it ready, you you figured out, you know, you measured it, you know, you need six for your first floor windows, and then one big one for your sliding glass door in the back or what have you, you have it measured, I would recommend, like you said, spray painting exactly which one it is, so you're under stress, you know, trying to figure out and put a Ziploc and, you know, uh, duct tape the Ziploc with the screws, nails or whatever you need to each piece of plywood and say, front left, front right, right, you know, right rear, that, you know, and sliding idea. glass door. You know, and just have it ready because I know how it is under stress. Haven't been a cop. If I didn't have a plan, you don't want to be making that up on on the fly. As much stuff as we can, you know, dumb it down for for us. It was easy. It was easier. See, that's why I like talking about you. Talking with you because now you you always give me an idea to put my head. I'm like, now I gotta go do that because I like that you put the you put the Ziploc with the stuff ready to go and labeled it. And you know, well, but then you don't understand me. I I don't I don't know where most you're probably organized with your tools. I'm not. <laughs> So if you told me to go get the stuff right now, I, I the apocalypse would be over. Yeah. I would miss it. Um, So, yeah, use, using that. Now, let's say, okay, you don't have the plywood. You don't have that. Um, You could talk about makeshift stuff. So one of the things you can realize is that you can barricade your front door with just furniture, couches, chairs, like pretty effectively quickly, you know, mm -hmm. um, I've, I've done this firsthand. I know I've done drills doing this and you can in like a minute just make a hell of a barricade from your front door. It's not going to stop a tank. It's not going to stop, you know, a vehicle, but guess what? Someone trying to get through seven chairs and a table and a couch, that's going to mm -hmm. slow them down a, a, a lot. You know, it's, it's exactly. very difficult. And it's going to give you what? It's going to give you time to get out, get help or, or get defensive. Right. Mm -hmm. It's going to give you that time. And that's yeah. all. All these things, again, remember, every, everybody listening and watching, these things are not foolproof. One of these by themselves is not the answer. It's finding out how we can take two, three, four, five of these things, 
put them to your situation and then figure out what we're going to do with the time that it gives us. Mm -hmm. Are we going to further barricade to another place? Are we going to escape? Or are we going to take up defensive and potentially offensive positions depending on, you know, the laws and what the situation is? Yeah. And 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 to make it real, when you're talking about plywood, I remember, I don't know if it was Superstorm Sandy or Hurricane Irene, but I remember everybody was running out trying to get generators. Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, a lot of people calling Lowe's and Home Depot and, and uh, a couple of the other big stores and, and they, all the generators were gone. Mm-hmm. They were all gone. So, if I, you know, I have one now and if I can make a, just give you a thought, people listening, it, some generators, the vast majority of mine run on gasoline. When you try to store gasoline for a long time, it starts to separate and go bad. The one I got runs on the same tanks that your grill runs on. So that mm-hmm. doesn't ever go bad. And when people are lined up at gas stations trying to get gas, you can go right to the 7-Eleven or the local store and get, and they last indefinitely. You can store them, not in your garage. Don't store 15 of these propane tanks in your garage. Yeah. But if you have a shed or somewhere in your backyard or something like that, away from your home, you have it. And then there's also solar. So, you know, the difference between a solar one versus the electric or, or gas one is solar's quiet. So it doesn't attract any attention while you're you're generating and running power. So you don't have other people coming up to you trying to either determine if your place is occupied or, you know, I take care of my neighbors, but some people might not know their neighbors and you don't want your neighbors knocking on your door asking if they can, you know, get some hot water because they hear your generator going. Here, here's a safety tip uh, that should be probably out there too. Dude, if you have a gasoline power generator, do not use it. Do not have it in your house while it is running. It's yes. something you have to keep outside. It has fumes to it. Carbon monoxide comes out of it. There's your mm-hmm. safety tip of the day. Do not yeah, And not even in your garage, right? Not no, even in no. the garage. Keep it outside. Maybe if you can put it under some kind of structure. If you have a, a porch, maybe that might be all right if it's open. But do not bring that inside and yeah. think – because you're just going to fill up your house with carbon monoxide. So that is yes. a, that's safety man safety tip number yeah, one there. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Um, Definitely. So, uh, what else do I have? So, if you want to upgrade a little more, okay, uh, yep. s- there is, and again, this is not that expensive if you really look into it, is uh, the security window film. Have you ever dealt with this? Mm-hmm. Yeah, actually, I got a guy. If you want to contact Safety Man at Seal Plan, I got a guy that I can recommend who does that for a living. That is his business. He does homes, businesses. And this safety film, you can hit it with a crowbar. You can throw a cinder block at it. You're, you're not going to go through. You have to actually are going to wind up pushing the whole structure of the window casement or the sliding ass door casement in to get in. But somebody can sit outside with a hammer, a crowbar, baseball bat, or bricks, and it's, it's not going to get through this safety film. It's not bulletproof, but if somebody does shoot through it, we always know how we talk about secondary uh, projectiles. When a bullet goes through, the glass that it takes with it is now also traveling at 2,100 feet per second and causes secondary damage. This prevents that. So the bullet will make it through mm-hmm. at the same trajectory. This is not bulletproof. It's not even bullet resistant, but it keeps the glass from shattering. So if it's shot, it's still going to maintain a structural integrity and not be easily smashed and, and walk through. So again, it's building time and, and the person that I have to make noise, hopefully they'll give up and move on. Yeah. Um, this is one there that this could be more of an expensive thing um is is the next thing i have is uh actually having a safe room in your mm-hmm. house this is some kind of this is like tony stark stuff but it's cool i mean you could build something if you have the room and this is kind of dependent on what you have or or safe hidden room or a safe spot i mean if you got the extra money this is you know this is the cool thing i would want in my house some, some kind of like bookcase you know safe room kind of movie stuff i would love to have something like that i do have something small and hidden which i'm not going to talk about but um Mm -hmm. not to that level where it's like a hidden bookcase kind of thing which but that is something if you want to put some money and you want to have some fun building a safe room with communication in it um supplies and stuff like that that that's something that that's the next level of exterior so the one expensive thing i would say is that's probably your expensive thing yeah safe room so what I did, because again, going back to how me and tools aren't good, about seven years ago, I locked myself out of my bedroom and I couldn't get into my bedroom. So I tried and tried and tried to pick that little stupid lock and then pieces of it were falling off inside. So it stayed locked. So I got frustrated. I just punched a hole in it and unlocked it from the inside. And I don't know how to hang a door. So I called a guy, a contractor to replace my bedroom door. I said, hey, 
can you put an exterior grade door and frame like on my front door? So he put a solid core door with the, the solid frame with the three inch nail or screws that are holding it in place. So now my bedroom has a, a solid core door on it with a, mm. with a lock. Now check your fire code to whether or not you're allowed to have this kind of lock on it, but you could always add some dead bolts that you slide from the inside to do that for a safe room. Again, is it impenetrable? No, but it's going to give you time. It's going to give 911 time. It's going to give you time to either escape out a window, barricade, or get some sort of weapon system if that's what you're going to do. Yeah, and that's definitely part of it. If someone has an agenda to get in, it, listen, a lot of the studies they've seen with like active shooters and things like that, most time they don't want to spend too much time because they know that police are coming. They know that uh, they want to accomplish a goal. So if they're just going around rioting, looting, they're not going to spend more time than they have to trying to get into a structure. If they're getting in there, there's a dog, they're trying to get their barricade, the door's being the pain in the ass. It's a, yep. more likely they're going to go into the next house is what's going to happen. Exactly. But if they do have yep. an agenda and they're trying to get in, then the goal of yourself is not only defense, but also time, uh, getting time. Because an officer, depending on what town you live in, might take three to five minutes to get to your house from a 911 call. And by yeah. having secure doors, having a barricade once they get past that door, having another barricade inside your bedroom, having another secure door, that's going to build that three to five minute window, mm -hmm. hopefully, um, exactly. until help can can arrive. So exactly, um, and then we and we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about the the one incident that's running around the news based on the uh, civil unrest that's been going on in the cities is was the Shoprite in uh, Philadelphia uh, the other night was looted for 15 hours straight before police actually were able to show up. Now, there was no people in there, so there wasn't a potential loss of life, so it was property. But just understand, nothing we're saying here is, is going to be 100%. So uh, at safetyman.co, I do do business consultation on how to do some of these things. And you could take some of these concepts and apply them to businesses, like cameras, lighting, alarm systems, mm -hmm. and safety glazing is a great thing. And then obviously having your, your uh, barricades potentially set up your plywood or whatever you want to protect your uh, your windows and your doors and so forth from getting in. Yeah. Um, the next, okay, so the next step I want to go on to is your third, my third step. So we want our initial, our basic day-to-day -day stuff, our second stuff, our extreme stuff, and our third stuff is what I call the external barricade. And so a couple of things I put in there was community barricading. And by saying that is, Maybe knowing in your neighborhood, first off, maybe if some people live in gated communities, that's great, but not all of mm -hmm. us do um, no, and don't have security don't. guards and whatnot living at the end of our block. But for the people that live in a regular neighborhood, you should probably want to know if you have to blockade, let's say there is a ride or there is something where, okay, let's try to set up a blockade at least to slow people down from having thousand people march down our street or, or cause chaos. Mm -hmm. Uh, maybe knowing who has pickup trucks, knowing who has a trailer, knowing who has access to um, a Mack truck, maybe. Maybe you have a, someone that mm -hmm. has access to those kind of trailers or um, those pods or whatever they can drop off in the middle of the street. So having mm -hmm. maybe conversations with your neighbors or knowing who does what to make a plan. I mean, you don't want to... I would say right now is a perfect time to have these conversations because I say if you had this conversation two years ago, people were like, that guy is crazy that lives in that house exactly. out there. You know, yeah. but now yeah. it's like you and I have where... been told that a hundred times, right? <laughs> <laughs> that guy. But then, you know, when yeah. stuff, when it, it hits the fan, yeah. that's yeah. the guy you go see. And you're like, okay, yeah. what, what's the game plan here? Um, yeah. So now I think right now with everything going on, this is a conversation you could probably have with people in your neighborhood. Hey, if we had to block off our street, how will we do it? You know? If we had to stop people from coming into our community or our little area, how will we do it? And so yeah. that's a different conversation for depending on the landscape of where you live. Um, you could be living in an apartment building. You know, what's what's the community game plan for blocking off your courtyard or, or whatnot? So that's your next step is your exterior. So you have your, your residence. Now we're talking exterior, your community exterior. And like I said, it could be anything from apartment buildings to farm roads to suburbia to gated communities that is your next step out exactly um, and again yeah so what we're stressing is have the conversation because you know every place it's so geographically dependent and so you know dependent on how close you are with your neighbors but you having the conversation about 
everything we're talking about. You know, some of these are with your family. Some could be with law enforcement experts. Some could be with, you know, Anthony or I, and some could be with your neighbors to, because not everybody has to do every job. Some people, I found that after Superstorm Sandy or and Hurricane Irene, that different neighbors were banding together in areas that were cut off, like up in Tom Jervin, areas that couldn't get anything, had no power for, for a week and a half at a time. So some guys would go and get gas cans filled up. Some guys would go and get ice bags. Other guys would go and get food off the island and, and or out of the area and bring it back. You know, mm-hmm. so they had made you know, I don't want to use the word scavenging, but they had made supply runs and divvied them up mm-hmm. because, you know, and so know your neighbors. And like you said, if somebody's got a pickup truck, you can go get 150 bags of ice and somebody else can go get, you know, 20, 30, 40 propane canisters or gas cans. And somebody else can go and get, you know, toilet paper, tissues and tuna fish. That's great. I don't know why I went with all teas there, but it just... <laughs> Um, full of paper something we were all talking about the, the, other, the other thing so going along right with that one that you brought up was a neighborhood watch mm-hmm. you know like a neighborhood yeah. watch team you know that's that's something that, like a first level you could talk to on a daily basis it doesn't have to be a ride or barricade like hey you know this uh just pulling together a network of people that have skills and just putting it together hey this is our neighborhood watch team you know these are the people i know yeah. i can count on if x y and z happen you know yeah. And a good thing is a lot of people are walking now because so we've during this pandemic, I, it seems like the amount of people I've seen walking through my development has tripled. You probably would say the same thing either yeah. from working or from where you live. So it doesn't even have to be official. We're not saying you have to go out and patrol. But when you're out, pay attention. You know, don't be on your iPhone. Keep the volume in your headphones down a little bit so you can kind of hear, you know, somebody coming up behind you, a car coming up behind you or somebody screaming for help. And just pay attention. And when you're doing that, take note. That car doesn't belong there. That that looks weird, whatever it is. So neighborhood watch can be official or, and it can be unofficial. Mm-hmm. And when in doubt, call 911, right? Yeah. Call 911 when in doubt. Let the police figure it out. Don't approach people. Don't chase them away. Let the cop do that. That's our favorite call, right? A suspicious person there now. That's <laughs> our favorite call, right? <laughs> gets the, that gets the blood flowing. Yeah. I mean, that's what we want to do. <laughs> um. Last thing, last couple things here. Uh, so you are, okay, let's just play the hypothetical. You are stuck in your house. You are barricaded in. You do have the windows secured, sealed. Um, you know, you're in there. Okay, so what things, obviously food and water, okay? You know, we need mm-hmm. we need water maybe to get through a, a couple days, a day or two um, through there. But what other things do we need that we are stuck in that, like, you know, we definitely need? I, we talked about this and I've been talking about this since the pandemic started in the shelter in place. What everybody found out, I think about two months ago, three months ago was what they actually really need. Mm -hmm. You know, your needs are different than my needs are different than anybody else listening to this. So some people may say, I can't get my medication or maybe I do need a lot of toilet paper for some strange reason. You know, I, whatever your favorite food is, get that the food that you actually like that, that has a shelf life get that, you know, medical supplies, uh, medicine, contact lenses. I wear contact lenses. If I couldn't get contact lenses, you know, in, in, in three months and I'm out of them, that's not going to be a good day for me. Mm-hmm. So having a supply of those that you, that you can keep on hand. So stuff that's critical to you and the stuff that you realized that you missed. And when you finally did make it to the supermarket, wasn't there and you were stressed. That's the stuff you kind of want to think about uh, supplying in your in your stockpile, in your food kit, in your uh, prep kit or whatever it is. I found that prepping is personal, but that Mm -hmm. was the phrase that I found when this pandemic started because different people were were saying different things. And I'm a prepper and I have a lot of stuff in my basement. 95% of it wasn't, wasn't needed, but the stuff that I did want to go get to at the supermarket, I found out I really need to make sure I have more of certain things like contact lens, contact lens solution. We ran out of deodorant was another Mm -hmm. one. You know, yeah, I, I, one thing I, I found again, same thing as me. I'm thinking of all this other stuff, uh, shaving cream, you know, I have to shave yeah. still. So I yeah. did not yeah. have any shaving cream. I had to order it off Amazon and I can only get it in a six pack and it took a week and a half to get there. So I was yeah, dry yeah. shaving for a week. So that sucked. But, um, uh, and hand sanitizer, right? Hand yeah. Sanitizer. <laughs> but yeah, that, the, so the other thing too is, um, that everyone I think should have, and we've talked about before, it's just having a med kit, a tourniquet, mm-hmm. which uh, hopefully we're going to do an episode on in the future once we get things back together about tourniquets. Um, 
but uh, you know, even knowing how to make a makeshift tourniquet out of computer wires or string or rope or a belt, if need be, we'll talk about that in the future. But having a basic yeah. med kit um, in your house, because then again, if it is a situation you are injured, it is a riding situation. And you, let's say you're in the middle of the city, it might be an hour or two before officers or, or help can get there. So uh, mm-hmm. trying to self, uh, I don't want to say self medicate, but um, self treat wounds or, or things like that. Yeah. Um, is definitely something yeah, to, to slow the trauma time down to give you time to get to help. Yeah. Right? Cause isn't that the whole reason we were doing 15 days to slow the spread to flatten the curve was we didn't want to overwhelm, overwhelm the healthcare system. And what I was really stressing to people, I was like, you know, now's when you need to not pay attention when you're driving. Now is not the time to get into a serious car accident when there's a pandemic going on, because one, you risk, run the risk, risk of exposing yourself from the transport to the time you're in the hospital. But two, the hospital may not be, as well staffed, as well supplied, mm. and as well, uh, you know, have the capacity to treat you with the same level of care and urgency that you would normally have not during a pandemic. Yeah. You know? So just think about now. Now we have the pandemic and we have rioting. So all they're burning ambulances, fire trucks, and police cars. And now you have to call 911 because somebody's having a medical emergency. Just think of how stressed and taxed that system, that first responder system is right now. So it's super important to be able to have these things to, uh, be able to stop the bleed, you know, restore airway and, and treat for shock to get somebody some time so you can get help. Yeah. Um, one last thing we'll end with, I guess, um, mm-hmm. Jake, uh, one of, from social media, when we posted out there, Jake from Facebook said, uh, last step, have an escape plan. Um, yep. you know, if all else fails, you know, have a plan to get out of there. And that's, if you want to check, if you guys want to check out our other episode, we have an episode about making a prep bag. This is where your prep bag comes in handy. You got to get out. It's just not working. You're not able to safely secure into your residence um, and bunker down. Then have a bag, a prep bag ready to go. Make a plan to get out of there. Where are you, where are you going? A simple, hey, if this doesn't work, this is where we're going. You know, this is just exactly. – I, I have one with yeah. my family. Um, we have one. We know that there is a spot we go if things yeah. don't work out or problems start happening. When we've just recently had this discussion, I said this is, you know, where we're going just to, re, you know – to reiterate it, but, uh, we, yeah. you know, we have a plan in place. So, yeah, you have a primary meeting location, secondary meeting location, one that's walkable, one that's drivable and, and having an immediate meeting location. So one of the uh, leading causes of people dying in fires is people going back inside the residence because they think that somebody else didn't get out because mm-hmm. maybe the kids went out the back door, mom went out the front door and dad went out the garage and, you know, you're going to be running around frantic if you can't find your family. So when everybody does get out of the house, heaven forbid, there's a fire or like we just had a tree comes down on on your home and you have to escape. Everybody knows we're going to go right to the neighbor, you know, Mrs. Johnson's house, the house to the left. We're going to stand there. Don't, I don't recommend crossing the street because the police car or fire truck might run you over looking for the address. But we're going to and then let Mrs. Johnson know that you might be knocking on her door at three in the morning in your bathrobe and that it's not that kind of a situation. So, you know, she knows that the kids may go there. We may show up there if something happens. That way you don't have to go back inside and look for stuff and look for people when when they're all going to meet at the same location for safety. Yeah, and, and so like with my kids too, like they have we have an initial setup. Like if, if we have a problem here, they know where to go. We've I had that conversation with my kids. They already know that plan. And then I like I said, um, I have family that live close in proximity to where I live, so we've had a joint plan that if there is issues in our neighborhood, uh, we know Correct. where we're going after that. So just very Excellent. simple, and that's that's a ten minute conversation. That's that's very simple conversation to have. You know, yeah. hey, power's out. Phone like right now. Um, this is a perfect example. I saw on Facebook uh, a lot of people in my area, and I don't know if this is storm related or what. A lot of people's T-Mobile and Metro PCS or whatever are down right now. They've been down for the last yep. 24 hours, so phones yep. are down. Natural disaster happens. You know, if you're going to wait to that point, like, oh, I'll just te- if problems happen, I'll just text them. You know, we're so yeah. simple minded, like, oh, I'll just text them or send it. We'll, we'll figure it out then. Then you get in this situation, and boom, now what do yeah. you do? Just having that. Hey, this is the meetup point. This is where we're going to go. That's having that yes. escape plan, like Jake says from Facebook. That's um, mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a simple plan to have. Yeah, that's so. huge. That's huge. Have an escape plan, have a rally point and a secondary rally point. Um, 
so I guess to end there, uh, like I said, first off, if anyone else wants to check out the prep bag episode or some of our other episodes, go to our YouTube page. Make sure you subscribe. It's free to do. It does not cost anything. If someone wants to up their game and now, I mean, I, most of it's on the screen here, as you can obviously see. Um, but if, let's say, you know, uh, you want home evaluation services. You can handle that, right, Corey? That's something you offer? Absolutely. Home and business evaluation services, uh, safety man, which is me. Uh, yeah, that's what I do. I, I was trained while I was a police officer. I did it every time I went to a residential or a commercial burglary. Part of the things that they made us do with our agency, and I'm glad they did. You know, I was probably annoyed as a patrolman at the time. I didn't understand the concept. I couldn't get it out of my couldn't get out of my own little box. But as I, you know, grew in the profession, I realized it was really good service to teach this business. What can we do, you know, to make sure this doesn't happen again, or treat treat a, uh, treat a resident with some of that good information? Like, how can I prevent this from happening again? Because then the neighbors are out and, you know, you get two or three neighbors and the residents are together. Say trim those bushes back. If you have to have trees, put rose bushes with thorns next to your basement windows because it's really it makes it hard for some somebody to try and break in your basement window when there's thorny bushes there and so forth. You know, I get people want aesthetics on the outside, but let's make it, you know, effective, too. So, yeah, we do home evaluation and uh, commercial evaluation as part of my crisis management package for people. All right, and good to know. And if anyone wants to get a hold of me, you can get a hold of me on Twitter at Ida Hoagie. Uh, we'll have uh, Daniel. Uh, Daniel, I just a little plug there hey, from Invoke Video. You can check him out, invokevideo.com. He does all our editing and stuff. Uh, he'll put my name down there so you'll be able to see it. And Corey, obviously, you can see it at safetyman.co. You can see on his screen right now. So, yep. all right. Uh, thanks, man. Stay safe. Um, and uh, I look forward to our next episode. Indeed. Everybody, stay safe, stay healthy. And remember, de-escalate yes yes de-escalate all right thanks guys i'll see you later all right um all right yeah that went good man i think that went good yeah let me uh hold on let me cut the uh sound and edit out here